Hello world, this is Chris. We are doing a assembly of a Raspberry Pi 4 today. So this is the Vilras kit that I recently did a unboxing video of and I just want to do a quick video of the assembly of this Raspberry Pi and the items that are included in the kit. So one thing that I noted on the unboxing video is it does come with these screws that are specifically for the camera so we're not going to be using a camera on this build I'm just going to set that off to the side so this is the Raspberry Pi itself everything that the Raspberry Pi is is right here the processor is built on the RAM is built in everything is right there we do have a display output as well as a camera port then we have the USB-C port as well as HDMI 0, HDMI 1, and then what can be used for audio or your AV. So if you connect the old school AV lines being to a TV or something along those lines, that'll come right off of here. And then we have four USB ports. So you have standard uh, USB 2 and then we have USB 3 as well. Now what's nice about this one is also has the LAN port on board if you would like to interface directly into a local area network. Uh, one thing to note is this case does come with this fan, as I had mentioned. You can utilize this fan with a 3.3 or a 5 volt. Now, it does take power, so you can either pull the power off of your breadboard, once you add a breadboard to this unit with a T-adapter and a ribbon cable, or you can pull power directly off of pins 1 and 2 on your Pi. To note here, pin 1 and 2 are the ones right here. So if you orient this fashion, you have pin 1 in your bottom right corner and pin 2 in your bottom left corner. So let's go ahead and take a look in the directions as far as what Vilros has for your setup. The very first thing you have in your manual here is the introduction and some getting started information. And the specific information that I'm looking for here is our heat sink placements. Okay, the layout here will also give you further information for the Raspberry Pi itself. And this is one of the things that I really like about the Vilros Kiss is it does come with a plethora of information, especially if it's your first time with the Raspberry Pi. So notice here these four chipsets need the heat sinks. These are the heat sinks that we recently showed in the unboxing video. So I'm going to pop these open here and let's take a look at what we have. Okay, it comes with another one of their little uh, labels here. So it says heat sink on it. It's got the snazzy little Ville Ross logo. And these are the heat sinks that are included in the kit. Notice the physical size and shape. They are dedicated for these specific chips. So we have these two that are quite a bit smaller, and then you have the one that's more of a rectangular and another large square uh, heat sink here. And this one is the one that is supposed to be dedicated for the CPU. Now I prefer just based on myself to have all of my cooling fins in the same order. It does help with uh, airflow in certain cases, since this case sp uh, specifically has that fan uh, on the top of it, it's not necessarily going to be a cross-flow situation, but for the sake of your visual, I do like to have all of my heat sinks lined up together. So since my fins here are in this orientation, and I basically am going off of what I have with my oblong or my uh, rectangular, since that's going to have to be here, I can't rotate this way, then I'm going to choose to have all of my fins in this orientation. So let's go ahead and actually peel off the self-adhesive on the heat sink for the CPU. And we'll go ahead and apply that directly to the CPU. You don't want to put a whole lot of pressure down, but you definitely want it to stick. Now you do want to get that as centered and perfectly oriented on that CPU as possible just to help make sure you're not offset. Now it will have a little bit of wiggle to it, and it is suggested to actually give it a little bit of wiggle to help make sure it does adhere to the chip. Now you can see here that it's not... Uh, directly attached in any fashion. There's no screws. It's all based on that adhesive. So you want to make sure that adhesive is stuck well. The next, I'm actually going to go to my smaller pieces 
because as you try to put that on, if you do have your large oblong, then it will get in the way for your orientation on these units. Now, if you look at these heat sinks, they are the same size. There is no difference between the two. So I'm just going to start with one. And since the top right there has the other pins, I'm going to choose to go towards that one next because I need to deal with as much movement and room that I have with the finger sides that I have. All right, so I put it on the chip here, give it a little wiggle, make sure everything is adhered well, make sure it's lined up just for my visual sake. And then we have that secondary heat sink on there, so it works out pretty well. Now we'll go with a third. Same thing, the self-adhesive that is on this heat sink. I just need to pull that off. And then it jumped back on me. Now these are hard to see, and you probably can't even tell over the camera, but that one of that self-adhesive piece just jumped right back on the chip. All right, and this last one, same thing. Apply that, a little bit of a wiggle, make sure it's lined up just for your visual pleasure. And we have three out of our four. Now the last one is this large rectangular one, and we need to do the same process as remove the self-adhesives, cover, take with trying not to actually touch the self-adhesive part to make sure it's nothing but adhesive. You don't get any of your grimy finger juices or fingerprint or dirt or anything in there. And you see here, now we have all four. Okay, give that a little bit of a wiggle. It is centered on that chip quite well. And notice the way that I'm holding this. When you're assembling your Raspberry Pi or really dealing with any printed circuit board, you don't want to be directly grabbing onto the board itself. You have a lot of chip sets in here. You have a lot of components. You have a lot of things going on. You don't necessarily want to take a chance of your fingers being uh, dirty or potentially having static electricity on your body that you will discharge into the chip. Okay, so it's always preferred to actually hold this on the edges. All right, now we're going to move on to the next step. Since we have all of our uh, heat sinks on our chip, I'd like to now place this in the casing. So I'm gonna pull this over here and notice here, since I'm actually working on a plastic surface, I'm keeping my Raspberry Pi, the circuit board here on the paper. And I'm doing that because there is a possibility of a static electricity building up on this plastic surface and I don't want it to have direct contact with my circuit board. Now you can use a static free bag or a number of different things for that, but this paper book works quite well. So I'm bringing over the manual here that Bill Ross includes with their case. So notice it basically just indicates what is the bottom, what is the top, and then it goes over some information for the actual assembly that I'll just read here. It says align the ports and insert the Raspberry Pi into the bottom part of the case. Notice this is the bottom, so this is our bottom right here. And I'll just go ahead and orient the same fashion that they have. This section right here with that cutout, that's for your SD card. So once it goes into the case, we're going to be oriented in this fashion. Once insert, press down on the board until it snaps into place. Connect the fan to your Pi by connecting the black cable to pin number 14 and connecting the red cable to pin number 2. For full power on pin number, or for full power mode, or to pin number 1 for quiet mode. So we have 1 and 2. Notice I mentioned the 3.3 and the 5 volt options. They are considering quiet mode, the 3.3 essentially is just going to be spinning a little bit slower. Align the top part of the case with the ports and press the top and bottom case together to say snap into place. So this is not a screwed assembly. As I had mentioned, this is a snap into place. So I mentioned the SD card orientation here. Notice you have your SD card right here on the bottom of the chipset. So I'm going to uh, follow the directions that they have here and essentially just work on putting that into place. And here we have our snap worked out quite well. And again, notice your SD card portion is right here. So you have access to that through the case. And then all of your ports here are lining up. So you have your HDMI 0, your HDMI 1, your USB-C. And then here again, we have our display, our camera, and then we have our GPIO pins. Now this casing, you have two of options. 
personally, I'm going to be utilizing this with a ribbon cable as well as a T adapter for a breadboard. And we have box openings as well as some information about those on some of our other videos. If I attach directly to these pins, I do not have the ability to then use the ribbon cable. Therefore, I need to be able to pass it through one of these ports or I could drill out a separate port. Since this is a display port, this is the camera port, I know in the future I plan to be utilizing this camera on the onboard system. So I'm going to pass it through the port for the display cable because I'm not going to be using display. So I'm basically just going to be routing this cable right back up out of the casing. Now this is something that becomes a variable. You are not guaranteed to be doing the same process. If you wish to go ahead and just actually apply in quiet mode, you can attach to pin 1 and 2 and you'll get your 3.3 volts. Okay, so this way I have my out or my uh, power supply for my fan coming right out of my case, which means I can use a male-to-male -male cable and jump off my breadboard to then in turn power my case fan. Okay, so now notice here on the directions, essentially once you have your system in place, you just pop that top on. Now we note here that you have your LAN, your USB, and then you have all your other interfaces that are on this side. Then you have your large slit for the GPIO ports so you can get that ribbon cable in there. This is one of the things I really like about this case is you do have all these capabilities to still have access to all your ports. Pops right on there and then with a little bit of pressure, it should snap right together just like we have here. Now the one side snapped but the other side did not so I'm just going to apply a little bit more pressure, give it a little wiggle and now everything goes together. So it is nice about this, this is a screwless assembly, this is entirely snapped into place and notice basically everything is based on tension. So since I do have my cables coming out here for my power supply for my fan, I can now connect to my GPIO. It actually says GPIO right there. So what I'm eventually going to be doing is I'm going to be doing the ribbon cable coming out of this unit and then I'm going to go to a T adapter which allows me to then hit my breadboard so I can start doing some prototyping and we'll be utilizing this in class actually later on today. So this is essentially the assembly of the Raspberry Pi. Now I have the included power adapter. Plugs right into there. Pretty simple setup, okay? And the next piece is my SD card. The SD card, I believe, should slide right in here. Pops into place, and quite honestly, once you have it in place, you really don't remove it. Just make sure it's snug so you do have a good connection there. And then you do have some LED indicator lights that will light up that are right here, um, essentially to the right of your SD card as well as to your display port and right behind your power supply for your USB-C. So as I mentioned, I do really like this case. This is a great case for everything that I have needed to do. Uh, I do have full access to all my different ports. Now I would quite honestly like to see a different type of an option for the power uh, since I just have to route it outside of another port. Now I certainly can say route it outside of this, this hole or just make another hole in this case if I wish to do such things. But I'm essentially just going to be doing my ribbon cable coming out and then hit my T adapter and I'm just going to bring power right back so I can control the fan this way. Notice a large portion of the fan goes directly on, down onto the CPU and then once uh, you have that airflow, you do have that capability of basically all the ports around it. You have opening, it's not an entirely sealed system, so you do have some airflow going around the entire board. And you do have the capability within the operating system, or even if you write uh, some programs, you can certainly document your temperature and basically make sure everything is working properly. All right, so we have an SD card inserted. We have showed power. We have done the full assembly. Everything is good to go, and I'll need to move on and get ready for my ribbon cable and get everything going with the operating system here. This is the full assembly of the Vil Ross Raspberry Pi 4 kit. I hope you learned something. Please like and subscribe below. Thank you for watching.